All right, everybody. So um, continuing on, this is one video that I want you to, again, just sit back and watch. And, and then later on, you can go back and reference the video and, and complete it. This part, it doesn't just apply to normals. It applies to everything you develop. What I'm going to show you is how to create a cluster component. And uh, it's going to take this normal exercise and it's going to create a singular component that's going to get you a normal. Is that clear? All right, so um, what I'm going to do is uh, set up a, a cluster component based off of everything that you saw back to this point. Okay, so um, you can, you will have an option whether or not you want to do it reparametrized or if you want to do it based off of magnitude. I suggest reparametrizing it um, just because, uh, you know, you'll be able to do it as a proportion for where it's supposed to be on your panels. And usually it's going to wind up being 50-50, but, um, you know, anyway. So a uh, cluster component is really just a group of all of your components that you have here. And you can define certain values to be input values, and then you can define values to be output values. Um, so when you select everything that you see here, um, and in fact, I'm going to get rid of these because I'm going to need those as... Um, input values. So what I want to do is create a component that's going to have a surface that I plug in and then it's going to have uh, percentage values for where it's supposed to be on the surface. Um, so I will select all of these and I'm going to say um, in fact this one might wind up being an input value as well. Eh, we'll see. We'll leave it at 2 for now and it might yeah, well, alright. Anyway, uh, so you go here and you go to um, edit and you're going to do cluster. See that? Created a tiny little cluster. Does it look useful? No. Because you can't plug anything in. So you double click it and you go into this. So this is everything that lives inside of that cluster. And um, the only thing that you need to know is after this is made you do a little bit of pre-planning, like I decided that my numbers were going to be input values, and um, yeah, I'll worry about output later. But the input values look like this. I think they live up here in params and utility. Uh, yeah, cluster input and cluster output. So all this is is a tag that says what information is going to be plugged in. So I'll go to cluster input, and I'll plug this into surface. Okay. Now, um, this information here is, if you double click it, that's going to be what information shows on your component. So when I type in, uh, and I always forget whether or not name or nickname is the one that shows up on the actual component. But let's, uh, let's call this, let's just call it surf, and let's call this one surface, and I just... We might have to swap it later. I always forget which order it is. Um, but this is what you need to put in. Um, the important part about this particular cluster is that we've set it up to be a quadrilateral operation. This will not find a surface normal on anything but a quadrilateral surface or warped quad. Right? It has to have four boundary sides. So um, quadrilateral. <laughs> There we go. Quadrilateral surfaces only. And then you say OK. So I'm going to need to do the same thing for each of these inputs. OK. Um, plug this one in there, that one in there, that one in there, and that one in there. Um, I'm going to double click this and name it. So um, let's call this one UMIN. U minimum, and this is going to have to be a 0 0.00 to 1.00. Okay, you're going to want to type this stuff in to each one. So let me just very quickly write all this in. Thank you. All right, 
So that takes care of all of our input values, unless, of course, I want to change the index item. Um, I would suggest, uh, well, I mean, I could make a slider for it, I suppose, but I'll leave it at two for now and see if it breaks later. Um, <clears throat> and then the only other thing you're going to need is, and, and actually let me show you, if you save this, uh, save and close, that's what's going to happen. Um, it's going to have the input values, but it's not going to give me anything as my output value. So you need to actually program which of the output values that it produces do you actually want. And it doesn't have to be on the right end. It could be anything. In fact, one of the ones that I think I do want here as a cluster output is the point itself. So I'm going to plug this in, and that's going to be the point at which I'm finding my normal. So I'm going to call this end point and this is the normal point and that's the uh, base point of normal location say okay and then the other things that I'm going to want to reference are potentially any of these um, in fact the one that I the only one that I want right now that I, I think I know I want is the normal itself so I'll go in here and I'll say n normal and I don't need to write a description but this is normal in vector format all right now I'm gonna right click save and close okay so that created a custom component and it looks like I did I did I did exactly what I thought I was doing I reversed the names and so I'm, I'm gonna go back in and swap those later but anyway um, what we're gonna to want to do here right now this is kind of pre-programmed um, and it won't always be be pre-programmed. Um, so I need to go back into Rhino and I'm going to make this, I'm going to actually make this happen. Um, so let me turn this back on and I'm going to reference a surface, say set one surface, plug that in. And um, then I'm just going to need, so I plug that in here, doesn't look any different. 0 to 1.00, hit enter, copy paste, paste, paste. Plug that in, plug that in, plug that in and plug that in. So I don't have anything yet, but as I move this up, you'll see that that point moved across my surface. And if I go to uh, display and vector display, I can take my normal. It doesn't want to show me my normal. Well, anyway, let's uh, let's reconstruct the end half of this. So let's go to curve. Let's do uh, primitive and let's do line SDL. So I'll take my normal for the direction. I'm going to take uh, the start point is the normal point. Oops. And then I just need to give it a distance. So let's do 0 to 20. Plug that in. Increase that. And let's test it to make sure it's working. So I slide this back and forth, and it looks like it is accurately testing the location of um, the vector. What questions do you have? None? OK, so you guys will never forget how to make a normal ever, 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 ever again, right? I, I want you guys. I want you guys on on. You could do it here. I don't know if the bookmarks will stay, but I want you to bookmark the location of this video once I post it online. Okay, I want it bookmarked. I'll save it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is very. This is these two videos are like life changing videos for you. So make sure you keep them. Okay. Um, all right. Let's stop this.